Hello everyone, Weather Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the weather across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Tuesday evening, October 10, 2023. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video, share it, subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a brand new video. Feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section letting me know what the that's been like in your ear recently. Also, feel free to ask any weather related question that you might have about the future of the weather in your specific area. I respond to all comments and I really live for this stuff. Alright, so let's just take a look at what uh, the United States Climate Prediction Center is showing on their Global Tropics Hazards Outlook. We can see that valid for the week of October 18th to the 24th, we have some reds and whites right there across the southern gulf of mexico and the western caribbean and we know that's indicative of some amount of tropical cyclone formation at probability on the low end scale 20 percent chance then by october 25 to october 31 we see that extended some more into portions of the cayman islands cuba and jamaica so we'll see exactly what unfolds we know the climate prediction center doesn't always get it right it's just a waiting game at this point either way it does match up with climatology these are the positions where we usually see tropical development when we start to wrap up the season you can also see the browns that represent below normal rainfall across sections of africa and that's indicative of the fact that the monsoon season over africa is starting to wrap up which means that we won't be having all of those tropical waves exiting the coast of africa then making their way across the main development region into the caribbean let us take a look at what the u.s national hurricane center is showing on their seven day graphical tropical weather outlook we can see that that era across the main development region that was pointing more towards the northwest over the weekend is now pointing to a more west north westward kind of direction so there is a chance now that it might go towards the caribbean you can also see an area right here across the southwest gulf of mexico that has a low chance of tropical cyclone development due to the very strong wind shear as we take a look at what this system is showing it says that it has an 80 percent chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next seven days According to the Hurricane Center, states showers and thunderstorms associated with a broad area of low pressure located several hundred miles southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands continue to show signs of organization. Environmental conditions appear conducive for additional development, and a de tropical depression is likely to form within the next day or two while the system moves west northwestward or northwestward across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic so it's just a waiting game at this point we'll see exactly what unfolds whether the system chooses to go out to sea or whether it chooses to go towards the west let us take a look at the surface map of the atlantic for this evening we can see the l associated with that era flow pressure across the main development region we can also see numerous troughs one right here across another portion of the main development region another one right there to the north of the caribbean and we can also see a cold front that stretches all the way from northern sections of north atlantic all the way down into southern florida and the bahamas not to mention sections of the gulf of mexico we can also see the tropical wave that has been affecting portions of jamaica it has now been pushed off towards the west of the island and if we take a look at the visible satellite images of the atlantic before the sun went down we can see the clouds associated with that strong tropical wave that has a chance of development across the main development region it's definitely getting its act together lots of deep conviction associated with it we can also see the clouds associated with that next tropical wave to the west of jamaica so we did indeed get some, some amount of rainfall this morning then it started to dissipate as most of the clouds started to push into the cayman islands and cuba we can also see the clouds associated with uh, that cold front right there affecting portions of florida bahamas the waters of the gulf of mexico with some amount of overcast sky showers and thunderstorms we'll be talking more about the weather across the caribbean later on let's focus our attention on what happened across jamaica for today tuesday so we can see that as early as 2 10 a.m a post was made on our twitter facebook instagram tiktok page and if you're not following our pages if you have one of those platforms you can surely follow us at weather jamaica 
keep in mind that if we don't post something on our YouTube page, we're definitely posting on one of those other social media platforms. And it's definitely worth it. It always keeps you up to date on what's happening across Jamaica. So we can see that by 2.10 a.m., a post was made on our Twitter page highlighting the Cuban Doppler radar images showing light, moderate, and our heavy rainfall affecting sections of some southern and eastern parishes. And we can see that represented by the greens and the yellows that represent some amount of light to moderate and even heavy uh, rainfall. Then we can also see that by 10.21 a.m., we still had um, some amount of clouds coming in on the visible satellite images coming in more in a south easterly kind of fashion to the northwest definitely bring some amount of isolated rainfall to sections of st thomas sections of clarendon manchester and even sections of st elizabeth then it exited the other end of the island so definitely sections of hanover st james got some amount of afternoon rainfall <coughs> before the day ended and we can see on the visible satellite images before the sun went down that we didn't have much taking place across the island just some partly cloudy conditions coming in from the southeast definitely a lot of dry air starting to seep in behind that tropical wave even though on the infrared satellite images right now we can definitely see where we have some amount of convection taking place across the waters to the northwest of hanover Taking a look at the Doppler radar images from the Cuban radar site now, we can see that rainfall that we just saw on the satellite images right there to the northwest of Hanover. Nothing else taking place, but you might be wondering, what are these greens and yellows that we see across the island? Well, that's not rainfall, that's actually ground clutter. That's why we have to use the satellite images sometime to confirm. So we don't see that taking place across the island at all in satellite images, but definitely Doppler radar images are showing greens and yellows and reds that represent rainfall, but it's not rainfall at all. It's actually a glitch in the Doppler radar images. And this is why we definitely need Jamaican radar from the Meteorological Service of Jamaica to be fixed as quickly as possible. Hopefully they get it sorted out soon. If we take a look at the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology website, we can see where we indeed had that southeasterly kind of flow across the island for today. Definitely got an some amount of rainfall across sections of some southern and eastern parishes in Jamaica. Then it exited through the parishes of Hanover and St. James. Taking a look at the temperatures, right now we can see we have 26 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 28 degrees Celsius in Kingston. And by 3 a.m. on Wednesday, the temperatures in both Montego Bay and Kingston will have dipped to about 25 degrees celsius as it relates to the temperature forecast on a wednesday we do see lots of oranges across the jamaica era this is valid for 1 p.m 18 distance for 1 p.m on wednesday and we see that on both the euro and the gfs models oranges that represent even up to three maybe even touching close to four degrees celsius above normal temperatures so it's definitely gonna be hot on a wednesday uh, because we know that when both maps are showing something similar like this the chances of it actually happening are much higher and the average temperatures for the month of october in jamaica is about 89 degrees fahrenheit when we look at the thermometer 89 degrees fahrenheit is about the equivalent of 31 degrees celsius so if we should be getting three to four degrees celsius above normal temperatures for wednesday it should be anywhere from 31 to maybe even 34 or 35 degrees celsius so ensure that you stay hydrated ensure that you stay out of the sun during peak hours to prevent yourself from getting some kind of heat related illnesses let's just take a look at the dry air map we can see that definitely right behind the tropical wave lots of dry air started to seep into the jamaica area the yellows the oranges the reds and we can see it being represented by the key at the bottom we don't see those red red and those whites within those red that indicate some extreme dry air but it's definitely some amount of dry air across the island and we know the dry air limits the amount of rainfall that we usually get across an area as it relates to the siren dust forecast for 2 p.m on wednesday we do see that we have some slight browns that indicate some slight hazy weather across the northeastern caribbean the leeward islands 
the US and British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, Antigua, and Barbuda, Puerto Rico, Eastern Dominican Republic, but they won't even notice it one bit. What they would notice is those darker shades of brown that's situated across the eastern portion of the main development region. That's what we don't want to see to cause the hazy weather, not to mention trigger some sort of sinusitis or asthma or allergic reaction in some people. So we hope all of this vigorous plume stays out to sea. Taking a look at the wave forecast for Wednesday, we see that both the Euro and the GFS models have the blues around the island that represent 1 to 1.5 meter wave heights and that's due to the fact that winds are going to be coming in from the east southeast at a pretty good clip maybe averaging anywhere from 15 to 20 knots but where does all of that air pile up as usual across sections of some central and western parishes in jamaica we know what usually takes place cumulus clouds becoming cumulonimbus clouds during the daytime heating then we have that afternoon convection and with the upper level wind shear coming in from the northeast for tomorrow it's definitely going to be favoring more of the rainfall across sections of some southern parishes in jamaica even although the low level flow bringing all of this towards the north and west definitely more do we have overcast skies and rainfall for sections of some southern parishes if we take a look at the precipitation forecast for 2 p.m eastern standard time which is actually 1 p.m jamaica time we do see the blues that represent rainfall across sections of eastern jamaica definitely sections of st thomas and portland again and we see that on the euro model even although the euro model is showing more blues across sections of central and western parishes we know that when it comes to these precipitation maps we're looking for consensus we're looking at what both maps are showing and we do see that both of them are showing blues that represent rainfall across sections of eastern jamaica st thomas and portland for that time period skipping ahead to about 5 pm eastern standard time which is actually 4 pm jamaica time we now see the consensus with the blues across sections of some eastern central and maybe even some western parishes in jamaica on the gfs the euro model showing the same thing this is what we want to see when we want to be certain in the predictions that are being made so definitely sections of st thomas portland maybe spilling into sections of st mary st Catherine, clarendon st elizabeth so we'll see exactly what unfolds on wednesday either way we do have some rainfall maybe some isolated rainfall that is and we do see that the accumulated precipitation forecasts are in consensus with the wear not necessarily a tremendous amount of rainfall totals in the forecast euro model showing up to 0 0.19 of an inch across eastern jamaica maybe up to 0 0.22 of an inch across sections of northwestern jamaica gfs is a bit different not so much across northwestern jamaica but definitely eastern jamaica 0 0.11 of an inch of rainfall and we're indeed grateful that we're going to be getting in on some amount of rainfall we're in the month of october we're in the peak of our rainy season for both kingston whose bar graph is at the top and montego bay whose bar graph is at the bottom so we're actually you know a bit on schedule and considering that we see some amount of maybe possible tropical cyclone development on the climate prediction centers map earlier there might be a chance that we might be in for some more rainfall to affect sections of jamaica before we close out the month of october all right so that's it for the forecast across jamaica let's focus our attention on the rest of the caribbean so we don't see much across majority of the caribbean at all we do see some afternoon convection that took place across sections of venezuela western venezuela that is colombia panama costa rica nicaragua el salvador honduras guatemala and sections of the Yucatan Peninsula. We do see that rainfall across sections of the Cayman Islands and Cuba as well as the Bahamas as related to the Doppler radar images of the northeastern Caribbean. Let us take a look at what exactly took place across those spots for today. So we know the Doppler radar images show the actual rainfall as opposed to satellite images that show cloud cover. And if this image will load We'll definitely see where we had that, that rainfall. Doesn't seem to want to load at all. Alright, here we 
we go. So we're looking at the Northeastern Caribbean for today. Alright, so definitely we don't see much in the way of rainfall at all across the waters of the Northeastern Caribbean. Maybe some green surface and rainfall across sections of southern Puerto Rico. But we do see that for much of today, they were spirit rainfall. Not much moisture across the air, lots of dry air across the region. As it relates to the Barbados radar, we do see oh, indeed a some amount of scattered showers to the south of Barbados moving from east to west. So definitely coming into sections of St. Vincent and the Grenadines right now. Not so much Grenada or Tobago. But maybe later on tonight for sections of those spots. Taking a look at a wider view of Doppler radar images, we do see that rainfall that we just mentioned across sections of Colombia that we saw on the satellite images, Honduras, Guatemala, sections of Cuba as well. As well as the temperature forecast, both the EU and the GFS are showing lots of above normal temperatures across the Caribbean, across the entire basin in general as indicated by those oranges and red so we definitely are in for some more warm temperatures as it relates to the siren dust forecast only some slight browns across the northeastern portion of the Caribbean Puerto Rico, US and British Virgin Islands, Antigua and Barbuda that represent siren dust but we see that the vigorous plume as represented by those darker shades of browns is situated across the central and eastern Atlantic and we hope that it stays that way as it relates to the wave forecast for tomorrow across the Caribbean we're definitely seeing it starting to fill back oh we don't have those lighter blues that we've been having across majority of the Western Caribbean we're starting to get our winds back lots of strong winds that we're used to across the Caribbean basin coming in from the east and in turn the waves are responding so 1 meter to 1.5 meter wave ice as indicated by the blues maybe some purples across the Gulf of Mexico that indicate 2 meter wave heights and that's due to the fact that the winds are coming in from the east averaging 10 to 20 knots wherever we see those yellows that's why we have the 25 knots to 30 knot winds and we see that across the Gulf of Mexico where the cold front is situated and if we take a look at the rainfall forecast Keep in mind that both maps from the year and the JFS models are showing all the rainfall that is expected from now up until 10 p.m. on a Wednesday. We see it say 3Z Thursday. That's actually 10 p.m. on Wednesday when you calculate it. We do see that we do have some amount of slight grays that represent some isolated rainfall across the kingdom of the Leeward Islands, the US and British Virgin Islands, St. Kitts and Nevis, Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda not so much rainfall for sections of Guadeloupe or Dominica or Martinique but we do see that rainfall that we're already getting across sections of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and even sections of Grenada for tonight we can also see some slight greens across sections of Trinidad and Tobago that represent some isolated rainfall taking a look to the southern portion of the basin we see the consensus not much rainfall at all across sections of Guyana, Suriname or French Guyana but definitely sections of central and western Venezuela in for some amount of rainfall extreme rainfall as indicated by those purples could be experienced across sections of Colombia definitely some flash flooding in store not to mention Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala we do see some isolated rainfall definitely in store for sections of the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and Belize and we see that sections of the Cayman Islands are still in for some more rainfall from this tropical wave not to mention sections of Cuba you can also see that rainfall associated with that cold front across sections of Florida and the Bahamas and we know that when we have consensus like this the chances of it actually happening are much higher alright so that's it for today thanks for watching